So now the last thing to do is actually implement this Ajax call. Back in our app.js file, we're just going to make a simple Ajax call to hit that customer's endpoint that we just set up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to write a function called list accessible customers in which we can make our Ajax call. Uh, first thing we need for our API call is a URL. And we know our URL is just going to be the server URL plus the customer's endpoint. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Next, we'll just make an XML HTTP request. So we'll create a variable called XHR, and we'll just create an XML HTTP request. XHR to open. It's be a GET request with our URL. Specify true. We'll set some request headers. So first, we have the content type. And that is equal to application JSON. And we'll also set our header for our token, which is the important piece of information that we need in order to identify the user that's logged in and only return the customers and should be accessible by them. Okay, we'll just xhr.send and on load, we'll have a callback. If the status equals 200, we'll have a response equal to json.parse xhr.response. And if the response has a name field, because if you recall from our error handling, to catch the refresh token error. That error it was a JSON object with a name, so we just want to check that it's in the object. And the response name is equal to invalid refresh token. Then we know that the user had some sort of issue with their refresh token, and we need to force them through the authentication process. So in order to do that, we'll just call on link ads account, and that'll automatically trigger them through that flow. Otherwise, let's just console.log the response. Now all that's left to do is uh, create a way to actually call this function. So let's copy the function name, head over to our index.html file. We have this button right here that's for linking the ads account. Instead, what we're just going to do is replace this with the call to list accessible customers, and we'll write list accessible customers. What's nice about this is I was able to remove that other function call because once we click this, if it fails, it'll automatically trigger that authentication process, which is why we don't need that other function call. Let's give this a try. Now it's logging in. It shouldn't show this button until after you're logged in because we need that. Let's show our console. Error failed. Uh, no. Okay, so we're running into a cores error here. That's a pretty easy fix. In order to work with cross-origin requests, we need to set up our app for cores. So I'm just going to shut this down, shut this down, and I'm going to go pip install flask cores. In order to use flask cores, we just need to import a couple of things from flask cores. We'll import cores and Cross origin. Down here, we'll add a line cores equals cores app resources equals This line enables cores in our app and it also defines what origins we allow. Here we can see the client URL as well as what endpoints this applies to. Now in your application you may want to be a little more specific than just using a star for all endpoints. And then finally down here we'll just add a cross origin tag and that should do it. And now we 
run. Let's refresh. Aha! And now we have our customers. Beautiful. So the last thing I'm going to do, just to make this app super awesome, is remove this button altogether. We don't actually need this button anymore. And what we're going to do is now in our app.js file, as soon as we get this token, let's list accessible customers. So come in here, make our API call, and we've got our customer list, which you could display to the UI. All right, now let's do this, remove access, okay. Come back to our app, refresh, continue as Devin. Okay, we're logged in. Now it's trying to, oh, couldn't make that call because our refresh token wasn't there. So what we're gonna do, create a new one, go through the auth flow once more, generate that refresh token, sign me in again, get that JWT, exchange for a refresh token, get my customers and we are done. So that was a lot of content to go through. Hopefully you've learned a lot about the OAuth flow, credential management, uh, some efficient best practices and uh, being patient while you're coding. With that, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.